Hey everybody, Buddy Cosplay here. Welcome down to the shop. Today we're going to do a money saving tip and trick type video for you because glue pots, which you can see right here as an example, and one with a price, uh, can be a little bit expensive and most of us cosplayers work on a budget. Uh, you can find alternatives to a glue pot such as this, which is a plastic one that has a cap. But the thing is, is when the glue dries on the cap, it gets more and more difficult to take off. The, um, the glue pots themselves don't really have a twist on cap. It just uses a rubber stopper to kind of seal it and keep the air out and keep your glue from drying up. Um, so if you're a big user of barge rubber cement, you'll want some sort of glue pot. If you don't want to go 40 bucks for the expensive one, or even 20 for this type, which is still half price, I'll show you how to make Hillbilly glue pot, which is just a brush, some epoxy, and a mason jar. It's airtight, and you can use it to store your glue. Use it as you need, and it'll keep the air out and keep your glue fresh for longer. So let's get started on how to make this, and you can use it in your future builds. Barge rubber cement is a staple for me when I'm using my or making my cosplay. I really like using it as my adhesive to hold pieces together. I don't have to worry about the pieces getting too hot and the, melt, the glue melting like you do with hot glue. And super glue just sometimes fails. So this is my go-to um, adhesive. Now this stuff is not cheap. So if you could buy it in bulk like this, you would save some money. So if you do buy it in bulk, you're going to need to put it in something. You could put it directly into a jar, but if you do that, every time you use something such as a chip brush to get some out, it, you can't really clean them. And then you have to throw them away. So the only way to really preserve using a brush is to keep it in the barge until the next time you use it, and that will preserve it. So they make glue pots for that, and glue pots range from $25 to $90 and probably beyond that. I refuse to pay the big dollars for a glue pot that has the rubber stopper that goes in, keeps the air out, and keeps everything good. They can be expensive. I bought this alternative, which is a plastic container with a lid and a brush that goes through the lid. Now I use this to apply and store my barge between uses. The only problem with it is that if you get any barge between the lid and the rim, it, uh, it'll gunk up and it'll be hard to get off there. So it's just one of the things you have to be careful with when you use something other than a glue pot. Now these you can get for about 12 bucks, but if you want to save 12 bucks, it might have been 15, I can't remember, we can make one. So we're going to make one with a chip brush, a mason jar, some quick set epoxy, and that's it. And this was inspired by Evil Ted over at the Evil Ted channel, so I want to give him a shout out for this idea. Um, I, I'm basically taking it and showing you because if you're not subscribed with him, you may not see it, and it's a good enough idea to share with you. So hope you enjoy it. So let's just go ahead and get started. What I've done is I roughly found the center of the lid. I just made a cross where the center is. And I took the widest point and put lines on the left and right side. So I know how wide of a slit I'm going to have to cut in here. So these are the marks. And here's the line. And I also took the brush and held it in there to about the depth I want it to sit, which is just barely off the bottom. And then I marked that with a red line. So now I've got everything marked, which by the way, you can also do this with a pickle uh, container, old salsa container, or whatever. But the more grip you can get on these, the better for removing it once that, if, if any of the barge rubber cement gets in here and starts to make it stick. So if you're using a little tiny thin pickle jar, that lid's gonna be harder to get off. So just keep that in mind. I've got a cutting tool can use 
a knife. You can use a sharp pair of scissors to gouge through there, a, a pocket knife. You could do a lot of things to get this whole cut. But for simplicity's sake, I'm just going to cut it with the cutoff wheel on my rotary tool. Now I'm just using my knife to kind of break the surface between the long line and the direction going this way. That way this metal will bend and accept this wider piece. Now I'm just going to start bending that down using this. That's how it bent. You need to be aware that you can cut yourself too with the sharp metal. So be careful with that. All right. Now I've got the thickness that I need for this. I'm going to remove that. Just for safe, safety purposes, I'm going to bend these down. This will just keep any chance from cutting myself later to a minimum. Alright, so now we've got this, we've got it marked where we want it, and we're going to get set up to go. But before we do, I'm going to hold this in place. I'm going to cover these big holes so the epoxy doesn't just drip down. I'm just going to do that with a little masking tape. Again, I'm just putting this along the bottom just to hold this brush into place and to give the epoxy a surface to sit on so it doesn't just drip down into that hole. Now you can use the two-part epoxy that you mix together that becomes like a putty. You can use that as well. But uh, for this one, these were dollar, maybe dollar fifty and purple free. So now that we got that set. I'm going to test fit it. It sits in there just how I want. So when I want to use it, I take the lid off, brush it on, put it back when I'm finished. Now we're going to mix the epoxy and put it on top. I'm going to keep this because I'm going to use that. Well, no, I'll mix it directly on here. That way I can just do the whole thing the whole thing away when I'm done. I'm going to pop the top of these. So they come with a little pointer in the top. Turn the cap upside down, push it through, punctures that little foil liner. Got a popsicle stick to mix with. And this stuff's pretty stinky. Pretty much smells like um, sulfur. I would guess would be a good explanation. Equal parts A and B, just eyeballing it, and then you mix them really good. The only thing about this kind of epoxy is it doesn't really give you two different colors that you can see blending together like some of the good epox epoxies do. But the clear ones, they just you just have to know you're mixing it good enough. So make sure you mix it really well. I'm going to scoop it up and put the lid back on to hold it in place. Actually, I'm not. I don't want any of that to get in the lid. Scoop some up. Start laying that around. We want this to be airtight. And my butt is ringing. didn't want to talk to me. Now like I said we want this to be airtight because if air gets in there it is going to make the barge rubber cement set up faster. So we're going to throw this away. I'm going to clean up the edges and we're going to give that the five minutes it takes to set up. 
Okay, it's been about five minutes and this is cured well enough. It looks like it is over the entire thing and should be airtight. But for good measure, we're going to also do the same thing on the other side. We can remove all this now because the epoxy on the top will be hold it in, holding it in place. So we can remove all this. Be careful if you bent the metal back around here not to cut yourself while you're doing this. So we're going to mix up the other half of this. So we were able to do it with just these two tubes. Did not require a second one, which I thought it might. Stuff really does kind of smell like farts. I don't know how else to describe the smell. It's stinky fart smell. Like rotten eggs. Sulfur. Farts. Alright, I'm going to scoop some up and do the same thing. So I'm going to make sure we connect the lid to the brush. And if you have any extra you have to wipe off, make sure you do that before it sets up. I did a good enough job here, but I don't think I have to. I'm going to set it upside down just like that and give it five minutes to dry. Alright, five minutes has passed. That is set up. Pretty secure on there. So we now have our own airtight barge cement glue pot. Now I'm also going to test this for you just to make sure that this works before you build your own. So I'm going to take some. I'm going to put some barge in it. I'm going to use it throughout the week and then in seven days I'm going to come back with a report let you know how it worked out. There we go. It's ready for use. And this will help keep it airtight. See you in a week. It's been a week I've been using this glue pot. It has kept the glue nice and um, well it's kept it from being dried out. The lid hasn't been too hard to get off because I've been cleaning it as I've used it. And this brush has really helped when I have big things such as this weapon build I'm doing here. It really helps get that glue spread a lot faster. So I'm really enjoying the outcome of this glue pot. So if that's something you want to try to make yourself, I suggest you do it. It'll save you some money and uh, stay crafty. Hey, wait, wait, wait. Before you go, you should think about stopping over and seeing me at cccosplay.com. There you can find articles and tips to help you take your cosplay to the next level. Also, if you sign up for the membership email list, I'll send you a few surprises and let you know about special things before anyone else has a chance to hear about them. It'll be our little secret. And remember, stay crafty.